Hello my dear friends. I'm glad to see you on my channel. And I have an interesting video for the newer. And before I start, I want to thank all my subscribers. Thank you for being with me, watch my videos and write comments with good wishes. This is very valuable to me. Statistics show that many people watch my videos without a subscription. If you are interested in the history of the Ottoman Empire and want to learn a lot about the life of the sultans and the harem, then subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications, then you will not miss a single new video on my channel. And I wish you a pleasant viewing. In the Middle Ages, the Ottoman harem for women was subject to strict rules and strict morals. This applied to absolutely everything, from clothing to behavior. But over time, there were fewer and fewer restrictions for women. Eventually, it got to the point that the sultanas in the Ottoman Empire began to freely interfere in state affairs. Among such women was Seniha Sultan. Very strong and ambitious. She had regal beauty and a daring character. Her character was so impudent that many considered her behavior unworthy. Seniha Sultan wore European-style dresses, had short hair and rode a horse like a man. Speaking of men, by the way. The Sultana also did not show modesty with them. When talking to them, she spoke quickly and laughed loudly. Seniha Sultan was born on December 5, 1851 in the Sirigan Palace. Her father was the 31st Ottoman Sultan Abdulmasid I, and her mother was Nalandil Hanum Effendi. Her parents died when she was still young. The Sultana remained under the tutelage of Sultan Abdul Hamid II, her elder brother. Abdul Hamid decided to marry his sister. She was already 25 years old. And her chosen groom was not an old man, but a young man who was two years younger than Seniha, but at the same time had the potential for a brilliant future. The Sultana often visited her brother. She was a regular guest in his palace and attended all ceremonial meetings. One day, in 1898, the German Empress Augusta Victoria was invited to the palace. Sultan Abdul Hamid asked his sister Seniha and Mediha Sultan to behave more modestly in front of the guest of honor. But the women ignored him, and during the meeting, as usual, they chatted a lot and laughed very loudly. The Sultan felt embarrassed for his sisters and said to the Empress, Please forgive my sisters, they are a little nervous. As it turned out, Sultan Abdul Hamid did not choose the most successful husband for his sister. Together with Seniha, they tried to overthrow him from the throne. Having failed, Mahmud Pasha fled the country to Europe along with his sons. And four years later he died in Belgium. The sons of Seniha Sultan were allowed to return to their homeland. But due to past mistakes, they were received rather coldly in the palace. Seniha herself never married again. In March 1924, all members of the Ottoman family were ordered to leave the country. Seneca Sultan was already 73 years old at that time. The woman, in desperation, reached the nearest post office, from where she sent a telegram. To Ankara. His Holiness the President of Turkey Ghazi Mustafa Kemal Pasha. I am 73 years old. Since I am not able to even leave the room, it is financially impossible for me to comply with the decision. I ask you to allow an old woman like me to spend her last days in her room. Seniha bin Abdulmajid. But Seniha's request was ignored, and she, along with the rest of the Ottoman dynasty, was forced to leave the country. She was the oldest of them. Seniha moved to live in Nice. She had almost no money. Due to their excessive busyness, her sons did not help her. Soon they completely lost contact with each other. The sons did not know where their mother was. The only one who cared about Seniha was the former sultan of the Ottoman Empire Mehmet VI, her half-brother. Then he settled his life in San Remo, and for his sister he rented Villa Magnolia. However, two years later Mehmet VI died. Seniha was again left without a livelihood. She couldn't pay for the house her brother rented for her. The unfortunate elderly woman had to spend the night in the park and beg. She was saved only by the fact that it was a warm season then. Eyewitnesses described her as a very thin old woman in black clothes. Her youngest son learned of his mother's plight. 
He came to Nice and rented housing for her. It was a small servant's room in the attic of the Villa Carabasal. It was there that Seniha Sultan died at the age of 79, in 1931. Big problems arose with the funeral of the Sultana. At that time there were no Muslim cemeteries in Nice. And the family wanted Seniha Sultan to rest on exactly this. They wanted to bury her with dignity as a Muslim woman. But it was quite difficult to implement this. It would cost a lot of money for the family. At the lowest price, Seniha's body was embalmed. There was not enough money for morgue services. It was decided to transport Seniha's body to her homeland and bury her there. To do this, the last Caliph Abdulmasid sent an appeal to a company that was dealing with the issue of returning property to members of the Ottoman dynasty. He forced them to pay for the transportation of the deceased to Syria. From Syria the body was sent to Beirut, where Seniha was buried with full honors. I thank you for watching. Give this video a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And continue to stay with me so as not to miss new interesting stories about the Ottoman Empire. See you soon.